You guys may know I work an awful lot. What you may not know is I've been doing it for a long, long time. When I was 10 years old, I literally had two paper routes just so I could make money because I knew that I wanted to buy a bunch of snakes when my mom would actually let me do it. Not to mention I used to shovel snow, I used to rake leaves, I used to cut grass, do everything I could possibly do because I knew I wanted to one day start a business. I just didn't know exactly what it was and I knew it was going to be about snakes. And actually all that money I made when I was 10, 11, 12 years old ended up actually affording me enough money to buy my first really investment snake, which were the albino Burmese python. But before I bought that albino Burmese python pair, I actually got a job when I was 14 and a half years old at a place called The Pet Vendor, which is a pet shop. And I worked in the reptile section. It was just a small section. It was mainly a fish store, but it was super cool. I got a lot of experience. And when I finally turned 15 years old, my mom finally broke down and allowed me to buy my first snake, which of course was a normal Burmese python, just like Snaz. And that's when the floodgates really opened. Within a year, I had over 100 snakes in my ma's basement. And that's when I finally bought those albino Burmese pythons, my first real investment into the reptile world on a big level. But the fact was, I still wasn't working with snakes full time. And for six years, I worked at that pet shop, the pet vendor, and all it did was fuel my fire to make sure that I could be around these animals all the time, every day of my life. By the time I was 20, BHB reptiles had really started to take off and do really well. And we actually had our first child, my daughter Jade, of course. So Lori actually was a stay-at-home mom working with snakes on the side. Don't get me wrong, it's not like she was just raising the baby. She literally was raising a baby in one hand and feeding baby snakes in the other hand but I figured that maybe it was time for me to get a real job just in case the snake thing didn't work out believe it or not I went to go work at a machine shop as a machinist you have to remember back then the snake business was nothing like it was now there was literally not even one person that was breeding snakes full-time you know we really didn't know what to expect and having that job as a machinist for a handful of years taught me two things number one that I didn't want a real job like that. It wasn't fun. I hated every minute of it. And two, and most importantly, is that I was going to dedicate the rest of my life to only doing the thing that I really, truly love, which is working with reptiles. Speaking of which, breeding snakes basically became my life over the next couple decades. And we actually have our first clutch of colubrids for the year. It's actually a black house snake, which is a little African house snake. Beautiful little animals. I mean, look at that. It's almost like miniature Mexican black king snake. It looks like we have a pretty small clutch but look at it's not a very big girl these guys don't get very big but look at how gorgeous they are really high production animals too i mean this girl will probably lay three maybe even four clutches this year which are pretty good so we'll clean her up get her some water back in here all that but like i had mentioned over the next couple decades i basically just poured my life into breeding snakes growing my collection growing bhb to the biggest collection that i could possibly do and the biggest business that i possibly could do traveled all over the world doing trade shows you know, acquiring animals hatching just tons and tons of really cool animals it was really cool but again only three eggs from this clutch, but hey, that's the first three colubrid eggs of the season. Building our reptile business was a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice, but I loved it so much, I didn't care. I finally had found the thing that I really wanted to do every single day. And then of course in 2008, I was still just really focused on growing BHB and having the best breeding facility I possibly could. And it was the same kind of mission statement. It wasn't about like making money breeding snakes. It was about making enough money so that I could continue to breed snakes and just continue to work with it. And I thought that although I didn't like the idea of like selling snakes it wasn't like something I was really that interested in thought hey we are actually providing baby snakes to people that are starting to fall in love with reptiles so it's still the same life mission right you know like getting people interested with BHB the interest was just like hey I'm gonna produce these snakes I'm gonna give them to someone they're gonna fall in love with them and maybe all their neighbors and siblings are gonna fall in love with snakes too so it was a different philosophy but in 2008 we kind of changed things up a little bit still breeding snakes but we started our YouTube channel of course and that was the way of our reaching another level of people Okay, right. not only can we sell snakes to people and have them really fall in love with them, but now we can educate and entertain people on YouTube. And that was our original channel, Snake Bites. Take a look at our false water cobra right here. Oh my gosh, it's named Bandit. It's getting so big and looking so beautiful. And then after doing Snake Bites for almost 10 years, we started the vlog channel. Kind of changed things up. I downsized BHB because I wasn't as interested in breeding mass amounts of snakes. I really had the vision to like start daily vlogging and then ultimately start the Reptarium. Come here, this is place is so cool. Cool. You guys should see it. <laughs> of course, we all know what's going on with the Reptarium. It's uh, another level, right? You know, we're always packed. We're always sold out. It's always super busy. And we're changing people's minds about animals on a different level. Now, instead of you know, sharing just on YouTube, which we still love, but you're actually able to like physically have people touch animals, feel animals, and really fall in love with it. It's such a magical thing. And it's so addictive. It's absolutely amazing. And that feeling or addiction or obsession with reaching people that happen at the Reptarium, what really prompted the idea for the aquarium.
aquarium because we knew again that we could do 10 times the amount of people at the aquarium that we do at the Reptarium and that was like the whole vision of the whole thing. Just one more reason for me to push forward and keep on working my butt off to achieve my goals. And speaking of aquariums and work, we've got to head over to the aquarium house. I see your video. Awesome buddy, how are you? Cool. Good. Good. Is it your birthday or someone else's? Mine. Oh, happy birthday buddy. I can't believe I can see you for real life. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's real. Two little set screws to grab the flats, theoretically. Smart. Ah. Ooh. Damn, dude, you're a genius. <laughs> oh, yeah. Took two, three tries, but I figured it out. <laughs> oh, my God, that is perfect, man. That is beautiful, dude. My buddy Corey actually helped me out. We had one of the knobs here at our stove top that actually had, like, broken the mechanism inside this part right here. And unfortunately, we tried everywhere. You couldn't find it, you know, the right size. We ordered, like, ten different knobs. None of them worked. We even ordered, like, a universal knob thing where you can insert things. None of them worked. So Corey ended up making me a new one with a little set screw in here. Perfect. Uh, completely fixed because it's important because we have someone checking in here in just a couple hours and they actually want to cook tonight mm. so it's like a party that they're cooking so we needed to make sure the stove works so thank you dude of course you know the thing is is like I said I've worked my whole life you know it's all I've ever really done and like pretty much every single day there's so much to do so there's so many things that scare me about what's coming in the future the unknowns that I don't know about one of the things is is that like I can't imagine the days that I'm not going to be able to work just because I'm not going to be feeling up to it and that's just something that just doesn't happen to me you know so those are the days that I'm dreading the most you know and I know that I'm hearing from people that went through this similar treatment there's gonna be days where I'm not gonna be able to do much of anything you know hopefully there'll be a lot more days that I can come in and vlog and hang with you guys and work with the animals and do all that type of stuff but you know even the aquarium house like we got to come here every day to feed the fish to top off the tank to make sure everything is good you know in between rentals but you know by the way it's been going great you know definitely tons of rentals this last month if you guys are always interested the aquariumhouse.com book your rental or you can book it on Airbnb it's gone really well but again even coming here every day and doing stuff it's gonna be hard to not do that right you know not come and see the fish every day not go like oh I gotta get over there because I gotta top off the pond or I gotta fill up the pondless waterfall uh, it's uh, those are the things that are tough right the days that I'm feeling okay and are working I'll be okay it's the days that I can't work that I'm really worried about It's one of the things I love more than anything is feeding these guys. And again, coming here every day has been part of my routine and it's been amazing. It's an automatic feeder on this, by the way, so I don't have to feed them every day. But I still like to come here because it's just really cool. I love this house. I really have. You know, weirdly enough, I've never stayed at this house a night, which is really weird, right? But I absolutely love it here. It's going to be hard on the days that I can't come here because I'm going to be thinking like, what's going on at the aquarium house? How's the fish? How's everything going? So it's uh, it's just one of the things is that I, I think about a lot is that you know when I can keep busy I'm gonna be fine because my mind is off things I'm kind of keeping on going it's the days that I can't keep busy that are the by far the most terrifying